In this video, I'm going to have a look at the identity and type of an object that's an instance of a subclass, a subclass of the TKinter frame class. Before I go on to look at inheriting from the frame class, the TKinter frame class, what I'd like to do is to remind us of some of the work we've done previously on Python with respect to objects, their identity and their value. Let's consider this computer program and you can see the first line is A is assigned 7 and then we're going to print A and if we look at the runtime what we can expect to see is this. Now what's going on here is 7 is an integer and it's been assigned to A and then we're printing the value of that integer which we can clearly see in the runtime is 7. Now that's a pretty straightforward program. Let's have a look at this one here. I'm doing the same thing again on the first line. I'm saying that A equals 7, but then I'm printing the type of A, not the value of A. And if we have a look at what we get here, we get this. And what this is telling us is that the type of A is an integer. In other words, the 7 is an instance of the integer class. Let's now consider this computer program and again the first line is A is assigned 7 and then I'm printing the ID of A and if we look to the runtime we get this and you can see that this is the ID of A. Now when we talk about a variable in Python we're really talking about objects. A assigned 7 is an example of the creation of an object and we can see that the object has a value, it has a type and it has an identifier. And of course, as a programmer, we know it by this name. We know 7 by this name, the integer 7 by the name A. Let's consider the following computer program. And you can see that A is assigned 7, then I'm printing the value A, and then I'm printing the ID of A. So what I'll get at the runtime is this. There you can see the value of A, and there you can see the ID of A. It can be useful to consider the execution of this object oriented program by looking at the execution space and this is something I've done elsewhere on this channel. And when we execute this line A is assigned 7 we can think of the following being created. We can have the object and we can have this which is going to hold the reference to that object. And when we look at what will be populated within the object and the reference we will have the following. The object will hold 7 because we're assigning 7 here to A and this will hold the ID of that object as you can see here. Now this in effect points to where the object is in the execution space and we now say they are bound together and of course the whole thing here can be then regarded as the variable A. Consider the following extract taken from Python help. It says every object has an identity, a type and a value. An object's identity never changes once it has been created. You may think of it as the object's address in memory. So if I have a look at this 7, that's the object's value and this is the address of that object in the computer's memory. If we come down here, it says CPython implementation detail. For CPython, ID brackets X is the memory address where X is stored. Now ID and the brackets form the function and what's in the bracket is X in this case and that represents any variable we wish to find the ID of. In other words, any object we wish to find the ID of. And here you can see we're finding the ID of the variable A. So if we consider A, we can see it has the value of 7 and that's stored in the object. And it also has this here, which is the ID that points to where the object is in the computer's memory. Let's consider this pretty straightforward program statement in Python. A is assigned 7. Now as a programmer, what I'm saying to myself here, well, I've got a variable and it's got the value 7 in it, and 7 is an integer. But in fact, what I need to think about is the fact that when I do something like this, there's something going on behind the scenes. And we have this kind of relationship here. You see, this simple program statement generates something like this. It generates an ID, which tells you where the object is in memory. It produces a type. Now, types in Python are all based on classes, so it's an integer type. In other words, an integer class, and of course, it has the value of 7. And overall, however, as the programmer, I recognize all of this by the simple 
variable letter A because that's the variable name. So I would label that with A. So that's the mental picture I have of this pretty straightforward program statement in Python. Knowing that when I say A is assigned 7, I'm generating an object and it's an integer object and that object has an address and the object has a value of 7. So when you say something as straightforward as this, you have to think of the ID, the type, which means the class, and the value. The previous video in this playlist defined this class. I coded this class and we had a look at it. And you can see that I've called this class red frame, which is the subclass of the frame, which is the superclass. And here I've coded up an initialization routine, which I've explained in detail in the previous video. What I want to do here, however, is to look at this line. It says frame underscore A is assigned red frame, and then we have the brackets with my window in. Now what this line is doing, is creating an instance of this class, an object of this class. Now this line is then positioning that object at row 0, column 0. If we look at this line, you can see that this user-friendly string is saying the ID of the frame underscore A is, and what this is going to do, it's going to tell us the ID of frame underscore A. A. And this line, it's going to put out this user-friendly string, the type of the frame underscore A is, and this is going to tell us the type of frame underscore A. Now the ID and the type we've seen already in this video for when we created an integer. What we're going to see here when the program runs is this. We can see we get the widget within the window. If you have a look at the widget, it's the instance of the red frame class, and it looks like this because we've set it up using this bit of code here to have this look, i.e. a red background and a raised outline. If we look here, however, we can see the output from the two print statements. And this is telling us the ID of frame A is this number here. Now that is the address in the computer's memory of the object created, the object that is bound to this name frame underscore A. If we have a look at this line, it's telling us the type of frame underscore A, and it's telling us it's of type class red frame, i.e. it's an instance of this class here. Now, if you look here, you can see that we've got double underscore main, double underscore. Now, that's to do with the fact that this is declared in this program, which is part of the main module. I'll worry about that at a later video. But what we can see is when we printed the ID, we got this, and when we printed the type, it told us it was red frame, which is an instance of this. So this is pretty much similar to what we had before. We printed the ID of an integer, so we got a number that looks something like this, and that tells us where the integer is in the memory. On this case, it's telling us where the widget is, the instance of the red frame class is, and what this is telling us is the type of the instance created, red frame, which means that the frame we've got here is based on this class, which has the coder I was responsible for typing up to work in the way in which I wanted it to work. Of course, at the beginning of this video, when I was looking at the integer a, which was a is assigned 7, I was able to print the value of a, which was 7. I could print that to the screen. Of course, with the widget, what is the value of the widget? Well, it's a little bit more involved. So it, in fact, would not help us at this stage to talk about printing the value of the widget. Because like the integer has the value of 7, we can't really say with ease what the value of this widget is. So I'm just going to skip that for the time being. But it is reasonable for us always to think of objects having an ID and being based on a class where that is another word for the type of the object being created. So the fact that we have used inheritance here to get this red frame with the look it has shouldn't distract us from the fact that we're not really doing a lot different here with respect to the object. You see, the object still has an ID and it still has a type. The type just happens to be the type red frame and the fact that red frame has inherited from frame doesn't break the model that we're discussing here. You see, every instance of a class whether that class is a subclass, will have an ID, and it will have a type. And as I've said, it's a little bit more difficult to discuss what the value is of the widget we're looking at at the moment. But I would recommend, for the time being, that you consider the following model.
Earlier in this video, we looked at this program statement, A is assigned 7, which means a variable is going to be generated that's going to store the integer 7. And we then went on to say under the bonnet of Python, we would have this representation for this program statement, where the object being created has an ID, it has a type, which is based on the class of the object, and of course it has a value. But as a programmer, I'm really interested in this variable's name. So I label this with this here. And you can see that for me as the programmer, I really am interested in A. And all of this I know to be there. Now when we move on to have a look at how we create instances of classes, and in the case of this video, an instance of the subclass, an instance of the subclass red frame, we can look to this program statement here, where we have the creation of an instance of this class, and that instance is going to have this name. Now, under the bonnet of Python for this, we can still use a similar diagram to the one above, as I'm showing here. You see, the instance will have an ID, it'll have a type, it's of type red frame, which of course is the class, and it'll have a value. Now, I'm showing the value as its visual representation when it's loaded onto a window. Now, for this diagram, it's quite clear what the value is. It's 7. When we come here, however, it's not as straightforward to decide what the value is of the instance that's being created. So that's why I just show a visual representation here. When you're dealing with integers and floats, what we have is a very straightforward idea of a value. When we then go on to develop more complex programs that use complex data types, the value becomes a little bit more difficult to talk about. It's not as straightforward as referring to the value of an integer. So when I'm talking about the creation of a red frame, i.e. a widget, I just simply like to think of it as having the value of its look. Now, of course, when we go on to develop compound widgets, the value will simply start to be even more difficult to discuss because this will have buttons on it, it'll have labels, it'll have entry widgets and so on for the application that we're going to be building. But for the program we've looked at, I think it's quite useful to have this model here where we have an ID, we have a type which is red frame which is based on the class and we have the value which I'm choosing to be the visual representation. But of course, as a programmer, I would know all of this by this label here, frame underscore A, because that's the name I have give the instance here. This name is bound to the instance being created. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.